Hi, and welcome to today's show. This exclusive program is brought to you by ChelseaFan12.com. And today, with a brilliant hat trick from Eden Hazard, it was a 4 1 victory for Chelsea over Cardiff. So we're outside Stamford Bridge after the latest victory for Chelsea today. It was 4 1 in the end. I'm joined by Ron Chopper Harris and Gary Chivers to look back at this and also a oh, young supporter. Who's this thing? This is only his second game uh, and both times we have won. So I'm inviting him for every, every home game. Until they, if they get beat, you don't come no more. Isaac, so, how old are you? Six. Six years wow. old. Did you enjoy the game today? Yes. What about Eden Hazard? How good is he? He's really good. He's really good. Do you, who would you want to be when you grow up as a footballer? Gary Chivers or Eden Hazard? Ron Harris. Oh, it's close. <laughs> it was close, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. He thought about it for <coughs> point two of a second yeah. there. Excellent stuff. Ron, what do you think of today's game? Cardiff came out surprised us with a with a goal, but uh, was it ever in doubt? Well, I think that uh, you know most probably the worst thing that happened to Cardiff was that they got a goal in front. Uh, you know, and you know, to be truthful, I don't think they can complain because. Uh, for like long periods they was under the caution <laughs> you had a fellow I think is one of the best players in English football at the moment Eden Hazard he scored three goals and every time he gets the ball you know uh, we seem to benefit from it but uh, you know I don't think you know they can turn around Cardiff and say they was um, unfortunate or unlucky because <clears throat> you know I'm sure the managers say if they finish in fourth or fifth place from the bottom they'll be quite happy you know, because I can't see the, 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 the football at the moment. I think it's dominated by the big clubs. You've got, you know, if you said to me who's going to win the Premiership this season, it's either going to be Liverpool, Manchester United, Manchester City, Chelsea, maybe the Spurs. Although they got beat today, I think the others are just there to make up the numbers. We said at the beginning of the season, maybe our biggest signing was one we already had keeping Eden Hazard here for another few years it's got to be done hasn't it he's just, he's just head and shoulders above the rest Gary yeah I, I thought he was terrific today uh, in the first half he went hunting for the ball in the second half he found a lot more space but every time he gets the ball he's got one thing in, in, in his head and that is going at the, the, the Cardiff defence and it proved time and time again that when he did get hold of it and went at them he, he could have had four or five he, he looked he was unmarkable I have to say even with Ronnie marking him I think he was unmarkable today. I thought I thought he was excellent, and a lot of people have been have been saying about giving him the captaincy, and and, and giving him extra responsibility. That shows how responsible he was by knocking in a hat trick for us today. Well, we ran a poll actually. Who should be Chelsea captain? Hazard came out on top, just above Aspilicueta, with uh, Cahill, and then and um, David Luiz down down at the bottom. Those two. You you, you, were, you were captain, club captain for many years, Ron. Yeah. Ha having a winger as a captain is that is that positive? Well, I think that uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you've got 11 captains on the field. Uh, you know, my time, uh, I was captain for a long, long time. It always used to seem to be a, a defender that was captain, but uh, I don't think it would do him any harm if he, he's captain of the national side, isn't he? So, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, I can't see no reason without taking anything away from Dave, who I think is a, a fantastic player week in and week out does a steady old job without getting the accolades as what maybe Eden Hazard. But, you know, it, it just knocks on the head about these pundits that are saying that playing in the World Cup, uh, you come back tired. This fella's Eden Hazard is on fire. And he, I think he's proved that today. We're letting in goals still, even against Cardiff, who don't score many. Salt Bama got the goal today. What can we do to stop that? Because you know, coming up against teams in the top six, they're going to score more, aren't they? Arsenal got two, for example. I thought, I thought the goal come at the right time for us because we looked sloppy at the back, we weren't moving the ball quick enough, we got caught on the ball several times, we gave away possession and really when that hit us I thought that, that might wake us up and I think it did. Straight away we had a couple of more chances, could have scored and then when we eventually scored with Eden Hazard with, with, with the shot, low to the goalkeeper's right hand side, it's fully deserved. And then going in 2-1 it was game over but for 20 minutes of the game they, they were in the game and they made it difficult for us. Now, if you're in the UK and you want to see Chopper and Chivs in action, certainly, Ron, you're, you're going down to New Milton, aren't you? And uh, we've got the, the date there for you. It's on the 12th of October. On a Friday, yeah. Friday night. Yep. So I think that's International Break Weekend, isn't it, as well? Uh, 
I think you could be right. I think yeah. there's no, no game so on there. Got, New uh, Milton down near uh, New Bournemouth. It's then. at the football club at New Milton. Yeah. So which is not too far from where I used to live. So uh, I would imagine most of the people were Bournemouth supporters down that way, aren't they? So, <laughs> uh, but uh, no, we've travelled around. Like Chiefs comes with us the majority of times, and uh, I look forward to it. And if we can please. Uh, I think I'm, I think I'm the better half of the show when we're together, don't you? Well, <coughs> you know what I mean? well I always say to it people was... that uh, like very similar because people used to laugh at Chibs when he played, and they <laughs> <laughs> and they still laugh at him now. Why so, stop now? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, Cheers, no, they, they, yeah. I think they're good thank evenings. You. It's for a, a fantastic charity, and hopefully they put a few bums on seats and we have a good night. We look forward to seeing that, Ron. If we can get Dave Chidge to come in, just to take your place for a moment or two. We're going to substitute Ron, which has not been done in Chelsea oh, no, history, I don't think. Seven, seven, by me, I 795 <laughs> games, but he's on the bench now. Dave Chidge is with us. Dave, hello, thanks for joining us. Just tell us what you do around the, the Chelsea Football Club. You're, gracious, you're doing lots of things. Well, the main thing is the Chelsea Fancast, which is a podcast that's been going on for over 10 years now, which we do on a Monday night. I do a podcast with Kerry Dixon on a Thursday and we also do the Chelsea Fancast on a radio station called Love Sport Radio on a Friday evening. And I write for the fanzine, which is that marvellous piece there. Only a pound? Only a pound, hurry up. Uh, and I also work, also write for Football.London, do a lot of Chelsea writing for them. So we do a lot of stuff. You've been, you've been very busy. And the Supporters Trust. Well, so that's the, the one, yeah. Trust. yeah I forgot that. that. <laughs> Apart from that, not Apart a lot. Apart from that, not a lot, <laughs> no. You know. So you see them with the fans every week. Yes. Uh, what are they feeling at the moment? We're top of the league on goal difference now. A yeah. goal ahead of Liverpool, who won at uh, Wembley today as well. What, what they're saying about this 5 for 5 well, every, you know, everybody wants to win, you know, and supporters are absolutely like that. Uh, but I think the, the, the important thing at the moment is that the feel-good factor's back, I think. You know, it was really, really negative at the last days of Conte. Most of us would have kept him because he was a good manager. Let's not lie about that. But there was a really bad feeling about the place. And I think what Sarri's done, his attitude, the way he's got the players going, everybody seems, you know, they're playing with smiles on their faces. And if they're smiling, they're winning, we're happy. It's that simple. And why is it that Chelsea fans seem to have a love-hate relationship with a couple of players? Willian, for example, that people don't, don't like don't him. Don't start me on that. And, and Alonso, <laughs> I mean, he scored two goals at Wembley against Tottenham, won the game for us. Love him. Scored all the goals that he possibly could. Ivanovic scored two at Liverpool, he was a hero. But Alonso and a 50 50, no, aren't I'm, they? I'm, I'm not really buying that, actually, Chris. You go week in, week out like I do. You're in the stadium. You know, players like Alonso and William get 100% support in the stadium from the supporters that go there. I think a lot of the other nonsense that you hear is people that just don't get the chance to go, different right. kind of supporters. Yeah. We're all behind him in the stadium. I mean, personally, I love William. I thought when he came on today, I think he took a bit of time to warm up, had a few poor touches, but then he got going and he scored an absolutely superb goal. And that he's a class player, and I love him to pieces. And Alonso, without a doubt, has been our best player of the season apart from Hazard, so mm-hmm. I've got no problem with either of them. Gary, what's it like when you're getting a bit of grief from the crowd? When you make a bit of we, mistake. we never gave oh, him grief. Right. Well, well, listen, <laughs> I was, I was <laughs> homegrown. They loved me. Hey, that's why Chelsea supporters did, loved me. That's why we substituted Ron for you at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was all it was in, substitute pre-planned. Yeah, yeah. You make a mistake, the crowd got on your back. Do you start thinking, I better make not make, make another one? You think that automatically, but when you l- l- let me tell you, you can hear most of the crowd when, when you're playing. You know, because you're concentrating that hard, and but you can hear every single voice. But listen. Um, I enjoyed my time here, I had a fantastic time, loved playing for this football club, you're playing for the club you supported as a boy, what could be better? And, 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 you, and you mentioned, you mentioned uh, Alonso there, um, I, think, I think, like Dave says, I think he gets an un, untold stick at times, but I'd like him to just stay back and, and play as a player's a a little bit more. Def- yeah. yeah, he gets it in his head that he's got to go forward and he's and he and when he does go forward he, he does get some goals. Yeah. But I just like him defending for I think it's hard for people like David Luiz who plays beside him, you know, because he doesn't know where he is half the time because he's halfway up the pitch. But listen, he scores goals and he's played well for the club. He's 20 yards in front of Luiz, isn't well, he? Well he is, but I mean the interesting thing here is that in, in Aspilaqueta and, and Alonso We've got a left back and a right back who can't do what a modern left back and a modern right back is supposed to do. Lonzo is great going forward but can't defend. Asby's great defending, but he's not. I mean, his crosses today, for example, how many did he get in? You know. Yeah, he, he, so he's, he's not the best attacking right back. I mean, he's a superb defender, 
but I wouldn't call him the best attacking right back in the in the game. But who made most of Morata's goals? His well, that first, was last first, season. That was last though, season. But his first seven, yeah. first I think his first seven goals. Yeah, beautiful all, yeah, yeah, yeah great. Yeah, absolutely. Can't from Dave. That. Let's talk about the youth. We've got three away games coming we up have. now. We yeah. have. And we'll talk about those in a second. But the youth, are they going to get a chance now? hudson yeah. Adoy, he's got, well, he's got uh, four players in front of him. Hasn't he? He's got Hazard, William, Pedro and probably Moses all in, all in front yeah. of him. Yeah. Um, how tough is it going to be for those? Well, lost his cheek, he's now got an injury. Well, that's but a real shame, isn't it? Because so that, that's his he, chance. He doesn't get a look in much... You know, I, I, funny enough, I wrote a, a, a blog about it this week, but, you know, it, it looks like Sarri is doing what he, what he did in Napoli, which is pretty much have, a, a I would say, a first-team squad. Mm. So the, he's got a first 11 stroke 13, and then he's put the same people on the bench week in, week out as well. Yeah. So if you're not in the first-team squad, or if you're not on the bench or in the team, then you aren't going to get a looking. Luckily, of course, we've got the Carabao Cup and the Europa League matches, and I, I have a feeling he's going to pretty much been off who he's been playing you know the last four weeks in the Premier League and put in the others who haven't get, been getting a game and I, th I think that's really important because a what you've got is a mix of experienced players who aren't getting a game so the likes of Cahill Drinkwater mm. but also some of the youth so hudson Adoy, and Padu particularly yeah. shame Loftus-Cheek's injured but so actually I don't think the the B team if you want to call it that is that bad nice mix of experience and youth and I think it'll give the the Premier League players a rest and it will enable them to get some, some matches into their feet which they're going to need because one injury one suspension they're going to be needed and if they do come in and they haven't played all season that's yeah, exactly. pretty tough isn't it it is really tough coming into a, coming into a well oiled machine and, and, and not being about the first team and even playing in the, in the under 21s or being out on loan but it, it, like, like Dave just said it's given us an opportunity I, th I think both cups you know the uh, the Caribou Cup and the uh, Europa Cup. Uh, that, that's brilliant for for blooding in youngsters and playing with 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 the uh, with the first team. Yeah, absolutely. Three away games coming up, as we mentioned. And mm. we go to Greece. Power coming from the in the Europa League. Then we've got West Ham next Sunday away, and then Liverpool away in the Carabao Cup before we come back here in two weeks' time and play Liverpool again. Yep. Those two games in particular are going to be very interesting to see what which teams play in the first one but the second one it's going to be top of the table clash and, and possibly the, the best team we've played this season you'd say I know Arsenal were here but I think Liverpool are better than them well I, I think you know you asked me earlier on how, how the supporters all feel and we're all happy and we're loving winning but we're not under any illusion you know Sarri said himself that the team's a work in progress and we can see that too it's not not clicking a hundred percent and the reality is we haven't actually played anybody decent and I wouldn't include Arsenal in that no. Liverpool will be a test and then I can think that we play Liverpool at home in the league and we'll see what where we are that'll be a real benchmark as to how far we've progressed I think and yourself Gary what do you think about these next three away games two weeks before we come back to the bridge again Tough games, tough games. It'd be interesting to see what he does. I, I tend to believe that he'll play all his fringe players and, and, and bring him in, like David just said. But it's, it's important that we keep everyone sharp because, like, like we've just said, we've not had a real test yet. Thank you. And, and all of a sudden, we're going to get a Liverpool side who's on fire at the moment and scoring goals for fun. If you're listening to us on sportstalklive.com, we welcome you to the show. Uh, that's it for today. We're going to be back in two weeks' time. It's Liverpool, and it's a 5:30 kickoff, so it'll be under the, the floodlights. Should be a great atmosphere. We really look forward to that. Thanks to, to Dave as our Pleasure. guest this Lovely afternoon, you, Gary Chivers and Ron Harris, of course. And uh, if you want to get in touch, Twitter it's at fan12 Chelsea. We'll see you then. Bye bye. Visit the ChelseaFan12.com website today to keep up with all the latest Chelsea news and statistics. It's also the place to find signed shirts, photos and works of art featuring past and present legends. Sign up for free now at ChelseaFan12.com For the fans. I thought he, he done ever so well today. And when we check out, we, we just make it easy for teams to defend against us. Is that what you sent them home? Because you weren't out with them. And I'm not being funny. Have you got a bush tucker troll coming up or anything like that?